In this video, we'll break down the week one DraftKings main slate for the 2024 season, focusing on running backs. We'll let you know who to target and who to avoid coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee with the Fantasy Football Consultants. So on this show, we're going to be looking at running backs, but we did record week one DraftKing analysis for quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends. So links for those shows are in the description. Now, a word of warning, since this is an early look, news is likely to come out, which may alter some of our opinions. That is why about a week before the season, we are going to do a full DraftKings show with a full cash lineup and our favorite GPP play. So you don't miss any of our content, please smash that like button and hit the red subscribe button followed by the bell icon. And one other note, we want to hear from you, our community. So right in the comment section, please comment your favorite week one running back, given their DraftKings price and why. So let's go in the studio and break down these running backs. All right, as we look at the main slate on DraftKings for running back, veterans of FFC know we love the pay up for running back because they return their value more consistently than any other position. But when I look at this running back list, I say, where's the beef? Of the top 11 running backs, in my opinion, eight, eight of them are not on the main slate and therefore we cannot pick. They are Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Saquon Barkley, Jameer Gibbs, Tyron Williams, Derek Henry, Josh Jacobs, and Isaiah Pacheco. So we're stuck with these guys and the three that remain in the top 11 that we can pick from. Let's talk about them. That is Taylor, Robinson, and Etienne. Not surprisingly, the three most expensive. And man, if we can just go back and do it a time machine back to 2021, Jonathan Taylor would be more than worth this price because in 2021, he got over 2,000 rushing yards and 22 20 TDs. The following year, of course, when I drafted him number one, he missed almost the entire year with injuries. Last year, contract dispute and a thumb injury limited him just to eight games. But the good news is he was pretty good in those eight games on a per game basis. He had 100 yards and a TD a game. What's the concern I have? Two concerns. One, he just doesn't get involved much in the passing game, which hurts on DraftKings with a full PPR, and that his quarterback is Anthony Richardson, who could steal some carries, especially around the goal line. So if you are not opting for Jonathan Taylor, you might want to go with Bijan Robinson, who's $100 cheaper, and I like him a little more, even if they were the same price. And the reason is that I'm trusting the new coaching staff. The old coaching staff only gave, in the 16 healthy games that Bijan Robinson played, only gave Bijan Robinson three more carries than Tyler Algier. That's ridiculous. <laughs> With B. John Robinson and all his talent in his sophomore season, I have confidence. I believe that the new head coach and the new offensive coordinator will utilize him more on the ground. Last year with the Rams, the offensive coordinator heavily relied on Kyrene Williams. So we get a few more carries out of B. John Robinson with the new coaching staff, and we heavily rely on the fact that he's going to be used heavily in the passing game. Love that about him with the full PPR. And look, he's a home favorite, so the environment isn't too bad. So Bijan Robinson is someone with a 23 implied total. I'm going to be taking a hard look at. Travis Etienne, I think, is a sneaky pick in GPP. Now, why do I say that? You get exposure to the highest scoring game on the main slate, Jacksonville at Miami. The spread isn't a very big difference. So we're looking at a shootout potential. And from a contrarian perspective, I don't think people will stack Travis Etienne, Travis Etienne with, let's say, his quarterback or have him 
go with Tua and Tyreek Hill and run back on the other side with a Travis Etienne. Why do I say you could do that as a running back? Because he gets so heavily involved in the passing game. Do you realize that he had 58 receptions last year as a running back? That's sensational. Of course, he's going to get his carries as well. Do watch out for Tank Bixby. He is someone in his second year that might steal some of the goal line carries away from Travis Etienne. Beyond those big three, we have a whole series of running backs that aren't too far behind in price. James Cook, you might go, does he really deserve to be that close? The answer I'll say is yes, and the reason is the game environment. He is, has an implied total of 28. He's home, he's favored by seven points, and he's facing an Arizona defense that last year at least was dead last against running backs. Hey, when it comes to the running game, it's all James Cook on the Buffalo Bills when it comes to running backs. He had 1,122 rushing yards last year. And look what he did in the last nine games, which is relevant because that's when they had their offensive coordinator change to Joe Brady. He averaged 17 carries uh, per game in his last nine regular season games. So that is really uh, great. Obviously, the downside, you know what it is. It's his quarterback, Josh Allen, is going to steal goal line carries. It was actually shocking. He's the first 1,000-yard rusher, James Cook, last year to get only two rushing TDs. I'm a pass on the next running back, uh, Devon A-Chain. I get it that he's in that really high-scoring game, uh, great game environment, home favorite. So what's my problem on this guy that is so explosive who had you know, I, a bunch of runs last year, I think five for over 40 yards? My problem with him is his competition. They still have. Raheem Mostert, who had 21 rushing touchdowns last year. So you can expect him to be used not only with carries, but with carries around the goal line. And they did draft a, a rookie. So uh, 210 pounds, uh, Jalen Wright. So I, I, it's just too much uh, uncertainty among the Miami backfield for me to spend 6,800. They really priced them up more than I would uh, expect. But I'll tell you a bunch of people I like more than Davon A. Chain at a smaller price. I'll start with Alvin Kamara. So let's talk about the negatives on Kamara first. He's 29 years old. And you know, when you get that age of running back, you start showing your age. And Alvin Kamara is. And he's showing his age through efficiency. His first uh, four years in the NFL, he averaged almost five yards a carry. The last uh, few years, his efficiency has dropped to less than four yards a carry. The other thing that is uh, a little up in the air is what is going to be the role of last year's rookie, Kendra Miller, who missed almost the entire year with injuries. He is going to be healthy this year and how much of, of Kamara's load will be broken into. Now, the one thing you can know with Kamara is he's got a nice floor with his receiving game role. He had, last year, 5.8 receptions per game. That is best among all running backs. And you still got to love the game environment. He's a home favorite against the worst team in the NFL last year, who I think will be bad again this year, Carolina. So I don't blame you if you want to go with Kamara, but just remember, get ready for the obnoxious stuff that the Saints do around the goal line with Taysom Hill. I prefer Joe Mixon at $100 less. Now, let me just tell you what the guy last year on Houston did, Devin Singletary. So last year, Devin Singletary got 72 rushing yards and 15 receiving yards. 
that's per game. That's pretty good. So my question to you is, do you think Joe Mixon is better than Devin Singletary? Well, I'll tell you a group of people who do. And those group of people are named the Houston Texans. They are paying Joe Mixon $8.5 million. That's $3 million more than they were paying Devin Singletary. So I think he gets at least the role of Singletary, probably more. And the one thing I think that Joe Mixon can be better at is goal line work. So remember, you can say a, a lot about C.J. Stroud, great. But the one thing you can't say is he doesn't run a lot around the goal line, which is great news for Joe Mixon. Now, I got to say some of the negatives. It looks like he's on the decline, 28 uh, years old. He's averaged less than four yards a carry over the last five years. I'm not going to blame that on age. I'm going to blame that on the Cincinnati offensive line. So I have no problem going with Joe Mixon here in week one. But the guy I really like for his price at $6,300 is Rashad White and his seven dwarfs on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What do I like about him is he really came on last year uh, late, averaging 68 yards on the ground. And mix that in with being a great pass catcher. 3.8 receptions a game. So valuable on the full PPR on DraftKings. And a league high 91% catch, catch rate. And I don't see any competition this year. I know they drafted in the fourth round Bucky Irving. But I do not think see him as a threat to Rashad White's role. Especially in week one. And boy do I love week one's matchup. He is at home. He is favored with a solid 23 implied total against the Washington Commanders, who last year were absolutely awful against running backs, awful defense overall, uh, dead last against, uh, against, well, not dead last, 29th against uh, running backs. All right. Is there anybody else down here that I want to talk about? I will just say a quick word about uh, John, uh, by James Conner. So I like James Conner, just not this week. I, I, I like him because there's only three teams that run the ball more than Arizona, and James Conner is absolutely going to be their guy. He averaged 80 rushing yards per game. That's third best in the NFL, and they really utilize him around the goal line. Uh, when they have needed a yard, they've gone to him 27 times, and he's converted 23 of those times. That is really good. So what's my concern? My concern is he doesn't do a whole lot in the passing game. And from a game script perspective, Arizona very likely will be behind. They're seven-point dogs, and they're going to have to pass uh, to get back in the game. So... Uh, this may not be the James Conner game. So I am going to put a pause for this week on James Conner. Around the same price tag, you get Ken Walker, who, as a Seahawk fan, I was really worried about what his role was going to be last year when they drafted Zach Charbonnet. So I thought, you know, you could see a dip in production. You did get a dip in production. He went from 82 yards to 63 yards, but it had nothing to do with Zach Charbonnet. It, Zach Charbonnet uh, didn't steal a lot of his carries, and he didn't steal his goal line work, which is what they, what they thought. He was actually, Charbonnet was really poor around the goal line inside the five. He had six carries for negative six yards and only got one TD. I'm talking about Zach Charbonnet. So it was really the offensive line's fault. Now, it, it is believed they have put some effort to improving that offensive line as a Seahawks fan. I will see it when I, I'll believe it when I see it. But if they do even a little bit of improvement in offensive line, it'll really help uh, Ken Walker. He's a guy that if you can just create a little bit of a hole, he's an explosive back. He's a great game environment, home favorite against a bad Denver team last year. So you could go Ken Walker if you like. The last player that I want to talk about is Ramondre Stevenson. At only $5,900, sub $6,000, 
price on DraftKings. And what I like about Stevenson is his role on this New England team. It's not often you can get a bell cow for sub $6,000. And not just any bell cow. A bell cow that gets heavily involved in the pass game. What's the concern? The concern is it's New England. And how many opportunities is he going to have? He has a miserable uh, implied total of 17 for week one. He's on the road. Huge underdog, uh, nine and a half points. If you think New England can keep this game close and can put some points on the board against Cincinnati, man, do I think uh, Stevenson is a good way to go. Now, I will remind you that there is likely going to be opportunities that uh, come up. That's why we're going to do this show, late, a full show doing a DraftKings lineup later. So look for opportunities for a possible free square running back because these salaries will not change. All right, everybody, be sure to go to the description and check out our other preseason content for DraftKings and FanDuel for both quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. Until next time, take care, everybody. On your screen now are two videos we think you'll enjoy.